Thank you for attending today's Power Hour session. Um, Power Hour is something that we do on the first Wednesday of every month at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, so on the East Coast during what we think is, you know, lunch hour for, you know, most people on the East Coast and they can just, you know, uh, sit at their desk and eat their lunch while they learn something new. So uh, we do these on the first Wednesday of every month, again at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and every month is something different, uh, different, um, you know, subject matter. It varies widely. So some months are subjects that you might be interested in. Some months, you know, are you know you might not be interested. That's okay. But we do these, um, you know, monthly, and you can find out about them through. Uh, either you might have heard about it through Eventbrite or um, through a, a local community college, um, but you're always welcome to attend. So this, um, this particular session is budgets and financial reports for non-managers. Uh, I just want to um, you know, let you know that this is going to be mostly um, kind of lecture based. We're basically giving you, and this is what we do in our, our power hours, we give you um, an hour's worth of a bigger training just so that you can get, uh, yes, you get some takeaways because you get to understand and know a little bit more about the subject. But we also uh, try to encourage you to, if you're interested and you feel like uh, you want to share this training with others, you can always uh, request this training to be done uh, with your colleagues at your location or um, online via Zoom. You know, it's always open to further uh, conversation with you about what your needs are and how we can help you with those needs. So we present to you a variety of subjects and then you can decide if you would like to take that particular subject a little bit further. Uh, instead of just this one hour session, maybe you'd like a full eight hour session or even a four hour session. And some of these subjects could be multi-day sessions. Um, so it's totally up to you, but um, we'll just jump right in and, and we'll get started with budgets and financial reports for non-managers. So the term finance you know, has a broad meaning. It could be money required to do something, the money at the disposal of the organization, uh, or it could be a country or a person, a, a township. Um, another meaning for finance is the business or the art of managing monetary resources of that organization or township or person. Uh, and you can use this training not just for your, um, your business, or your work, but also for your personal uh, finances as well. Many of us are here today to learn how to deal with the finances of your company, your organization. Maybe it's your own business that you're trying to discover more about finances or even, like I say, your personal finances as well. So every day, organizations capture financial data and they store it for later use to compare uh, those values with predetermined budgets, um, for example. In addition, organizations create monthly reports that they have to deliver to their boards of directors or make public to their shareholders, to the government. Your relationship with finances in your company um, or employer may be because you've been promoted to a position that requires you to create and manage a budget. Uh, you might also be required to create reports about those finances in your division. Um, so understanding budgets and financial reports is really a crucial skill in determining how well the organization is doing. Um, many times that raw financial data doesn't really give you enough information uh, as to how, what is the financial position of the organization? How is the company doing? What is the health of the company? Just using that, that raw data really doesn't get you there. It doesn't get you those answers. However, when we can analyze that data and create these reports, it helps us take action 
or correct uh, different trends that are maybe taking the company off course, off budget, um, making sure that they really are delivering in financial performance. So as you learn more about uh, budgets and financial reports, you're going to begin to see that the data that we collect is, is really a useful tool for managing um, the everyday business functions of your company. And before we get deeper into that topic, I just want to take a few minutes to understand some of the basic um, terminology for handling finance. It really does have a vast vocabulary. And honestly, we could spend an entire workshop just reviewing the terms. Um, Having a grasp on the, the terminology is not necessarily essential to have a working knowledge of finances, but you know, I, I do want to give you some basic uh, information. So a term, and there's much more than what's listed on the um, slide here. There's many more terms than that, but uh, just to give you some basics, we might, you might hear the term accounting. And these are just standard practices for categorizing and order uh, organizing that financial data. Um, you might hear the term assets, which is something of value, a valuable item that the company owns. Uh, you might hear balance sheet, which is one of the reports that you could do. Uh, it lists the assets, debts, and owners' investment. The term budget is an itemized summary of the intended expenditure. So a budget is something that you do in advance of actually spending money. Uh, capital has many uh, different terms, but basically it's invested money. So when people talk about raising capital, they're talking about uh, you know, getting funding from investors. Um, the term cash flow is a pattern of revenues and expenses. So these are things that we can expect to occur, uh, how money comes in and how money flows out of the company. Uh, the term credit is basically it's the amount deducted from a debt. And a debit is an item of debt that's recorded in an account. Now these two credit and debit, they work together. Um, this is part of the balancing act of doing accounting. Uh, for every credit that you um, put in the book, you have to also include a debit. They have to equal each other. Depreciation is a term that um, basically is about the decrease in the value of an asset. Equity is ownership interest. Um, as you're paying down your debts, the equity increases because the value also increases. Um, expenses are the cost of doing business. So these are the bills that you pay every month. A financial ratio, there's many different uh, types, which, you know, you'll learn more about uh, in the bigger program of this training. Income is the amount of money coming into the company. It's also known as revenue. Uh, an income statement is a report that provides operating results for a specific period of time. Liability is a debt owed or a financial obligation. And net income, if you ever hear somebody say net income, you know, I kind of roll my eyes because I think of it more as profit. So that is the bottom line. Um, net income is what was your revenue minus expenses? This is how much money we made. That's your profit. So, and, and, who uses this information and what do they use it for? So I want to make sure that you have some of that information as well. There are many people who utilize the financial data of the company or the organization. Uh, their purposes for using it are going to vary based on their roles. But the fact remains that an accurate budget and financial reports, they're going to be necessary to meet each of those key players needs. So some of the key players here, the people that need this information are, you know, the leader of the organization, the CEO, for example. Um, and in your organization, you may have different terms for these people. Um, but the person at the top, the one that's, you know, using the financial data to steer the organization, you know, to the strategic vision, the mission, the goals of the company. The CFO, the chief financial officer, they are using this data um, for analyzing lots of information. They have to report to 
you know, senior leadership. And they have to make sure that the financial data is accurate. They also use it to, like for senior leadership, they use the financial data to control budgets, setting budgets, controlling budgets of probably several departments or business units. Um, the accounting department, they collect the financial data and they record it daily. Uh, everything, every transaction that takes place, they're recording that into the computer system and they compile it at the end of the month into different reports. Maybe you have some department or division managers. Uh, they might use the financial data to manage their areas or business units. They probably have their own budgets that they have to be accountable to. Um, boards of directors could also use this financial data to determine how well the company is doing. Um, you know, they might have to hold leaders accountable for meeting budgets and other financial obligations. You have government regulators that are using the financial data to determine if the company is being managed according to the law or the rules, um, you know, such as the IRS. You've got stockholders that are going to use this financial data to determine if the company is profitable and if if they're going to get dividends that year uh, off of their stock. You have investors that want to see that financial data to determine if they're uh, if they want to purchase stocks or if this is a company that they want to invest in. And you might have creditors too who are going to use your financial data to see if you're capable of paying back a loan. So this financial data is really crucial to so many different parties. We want to talk about budgets because budget, you know, the collecting of the financial data kind of starts with budgets. Uh, we want to make sure that we're setting good budgets in order to be able to, um, you know, collect and compare that data that we're collecting to the budgeted amount. So there's six commonly used budget types uh, for businesses and they are a sales budget, which is um, a budget that basically estimates future sales. So it's usually broken down into units and dollars. It's used to create company sales goals. You also have a production budget. This budget estimates the number of units that uh, have to be manufactured in order to meet those sales goals. So the uh, production budget also estimates the various costs involved with man manufacturing, such as labor and materials. Right? So these are going to be expenditures. Sales budgets are going to be revenue. The cash flow um, slash cash budget. This predicts future cash receipts and expenditures for a particular period of time. So it's really a short term future. Maybe it's quarterly or monthly. It's not for the entire year. Um, it really helps the business determine when income is going to be sufficient to cover expenses and when the company might need to get a loan in order to cover expenses during that time if things are uh, maybe the revenue is not coming in as expected or as, as enough to cover um, the expenditures. So you might have a marketing budget. Uh, this is a budget that estimates the funds needed for promoting your products, advertising, public relations, um, a project budget. These are really, really common. This is uh, a project specific. So it's the prediction of the costs associated with a particular project. It includes labor materials, maybe a subcontractor if needed, um, other expenses, you know, as well. It's, it's usually broken down into specific tasks called activities and each activity uh, has an expenditure associated with it. And it usually combines labor and materials as well at the same time. So, and then there's an expenditure budget, you know, it estimates what expenses the organization will have for a particular period of time. Again, monthly, quarterly, something like that. Um, and this would include supplies for, um, or selling items, so cost of goods sold, it includes office supplies, different bills that are coming in. So that would be the electric bill and so forth, utilities. So what information do you need? Of course, 
you need to know what your goals are when you're setting a budget. Um, what do you want to accomplish and how much money do you have to work with and what are the costs to accomplishing those goals. You also need to know what fiscal year you're working with because you can set a monthly budget. Again, you could set a, pro a project based budget. You could set a monthly operating budget. You can set a quarterly. You can set an annual. But it's important to know what your fiscal year is. So for schools, uh, if you work in a school district, typically the fiscal year is July through June. Uh, if you're a government entity, typical fiscal years are going to be October through September. Uh, maybe you uh, align with the calendar year and your fiscal year is the same as the calendar year, which is January through December. Maybe your, uh, your funding is coming from a specific grant. And some grants, I mean, really it depends on the grant, but they're all over the map. Um, you know, some grants are April through March, some grants are June through May. It just depends on what you're de uh, dealing with. So you need to know a couple things. What are the goals? for your department, let's say you're doing a department budget, what are your goals for that period of time? Um, if you're setting a quarterly budget, you'd be focused on what are your goals for that quarter? How much money do you have to work with? And what are the costs? So we have to ask some questions. Who should be involved in setting your budget? Well, we've listed a lot of things here. Um, Let's take a look at some of these, you know, talking to the CEO, if it's uh, depending on the type of budget it is, if it's a, a organization wide budget, of course, you'd want to get these key players involved along with, you know, other people, managers, operations, um, you know, maybe even HR who can give you labor costs. But it depends on, you know, the level of budget that you're doing. So you might not hit all of these in here, uh, depending on the size of your budget, but certainly um, you might hit several of them. What about looking at last year's budget? You know, that's a great way to do this year's budget. How did we do last year? Did we not put enough money in for this or that? Maybe I need to adjust. What about last year's financial reports? That'll tell you um, what all of your expenses are so you can anticipate, you know, this year's expenses. Has there been any um, inflation increases, cost of living increases? You need to know what this year's goals are, or like I say, if it's quarterly, then you, you wanna know the quarterly goals, monthly, you'd wanna know the monthly goals. What external factors uh, you know, are going on in the world? Uh, I'll give you an example. Last year, people probably set you know, some budgets for the year and what happened when COVID hit? Those budgets went right out the window. So external factors will impact um, your ability to maintain your budget. Uh, so we wanna, we wanna examine those first and, and, and try to anticipate the impact of those as we're developing our budget and, and, and develop it accordingly. Are there any price changes that we need to know about? Price changes, not just your own company's price changes, but price changes from the suppliers that you're dealing with. Um, uh, trends and patterns you need to look at. So, so all of these things you wanna take into consideration. You know, creating a budget is, is a challenging task, especially when it's, if you're doing it for the entire organization. The budget process is, is going to require input from many different areas and departments. It's going to require you to be a strategic thinker and, you know, people with the ability to, to determine what um, cost effective methods of doing things are because you want to try to be as lean as you can. Uh, in addition, people who know how to generate funds should be a part of the process. So this is going to help to determine how much money the organization will need to make in order to meet your budget goals. And how are we going to meet that? Um, so those people who are the money makers within your organization, you'll want them to be have some input on your budget too. When you're creating your budget for your organization, a team of people from various areas should be assembled. It might include areas like the accounting department, 
operations, sales, top administrators. Um, specifically, you might want to include the CEO, the CFO, a finance manager, um, certain department leaders and directors, maybe the project managers, if you have those, maybe a member of the board. And once that team is assembled uh, and established, you're gonna want them to submit information or even budgets for their departments and so forth. And then we work together to you know, refine everything um, and set, set the actual budget and have it be adopted by either the leaders of the organization or the board itself. And then we monitor it. So let me give you an example of the budget, a budget, I should say. So here's an example of a budget. It is a uh, organizational budget. Technically, it's for the entire year, but it's broken down by month. There's a couple things I want you to notice here. This is a line item budget. Yes, it's small for the purposes of this course. If you're talking about a full company, this um, budget might be hundreds, if not thousands of line items. Uh, I want you to notice that we're using nice big round numbers and you don't see any change in here. You don't see anything uh, indicated less than a dollar. So there's no decimal point, dot, dot. Um, this is what budgets are. They're, they're usually using round numbers. Maybe it's not uh, rounded to the nearest hundred dollars, but it, it certainly we don't use change in our budgets. Um, so this has a, a budget per month. The anticipated salary looks like it's gonna be the same across the entire year. Uh, they're giving away some bonuses, one bonus in April, another bonus in October. So you've got some change uh, happening there. Other income. Uh, just $1,000 in January. Okay, so that's pretty steady. And then we have some expenses. This looks like it's an individual, maybe an individual's budget. Um, you've got rent, food and groceries. This is definitely an individual um, restaurant. They go to a lot of restaurants, clearly. Uh, entertainment budget, some child care going on, clothing. They're only shopping three times a year. Vacation, they take two a year, it looks like. Uh, other expenses. Okay. And then they have a... Um, a tally. So they're tallying up the revenue, they're tallying up the expenses, and then they're telling us down here uh, how much excess they have. So what is the savings? Or we also call this net income, or in an organization, we can also call this profit. So how much profit have we made this month based on our spending? Okay, so this is an anticipate, this is a budget. Um, we anticipate things to go this way, but they don't always go this way. And so we have to um, monitor this on a regular basis. So how do we do that? What's included in that? We do budget reports and we typically do them on a monthly basis. Um, a budget for an organization almost looks like an income statement, but with a few extra columns. A budget report may be presented in many ways the the report can be done once some data starts coming in in other words once money has been spent and earned within the budget time frame so some budget reports present previous information from, from the past several years just to compare um you know do some comparisons others focus on the most current information um here's a basic outline of the categories of a budget so you have a column of categories. This is usually on the left-hand side. It lists all the inflows, expenses, net income categories. Um, it can be very general or very specific. It can be itemized, which is, you know, you want it to, uh, itemized as the very detailed, or sometimes it's just the category headings. It's really up to you on what um, the people who are reading the report, what they need to see. 
So then there's an actual inf uh, column for actual information. So we anticipated the budget to be this amount, but when the numbers start coming in, it's actually coming in at these numbers. That's what the actual means. So the actual numbers that have been reported. The budget line item is the numbers that we anticipated. And then you have a difference column, which is if you take the budgeted amount and the actual amount and you subtract the two, you have a, a variance or a difference, okay? So I'm gonna show you a report that's like this. So this is an organizational report. We, uh, This is how it typically goes. We have a, a revenue at the top. So we've got our revenue coming in. We budgeted for 500,000, but actually this quarter, we got an extra 50 grand. Um, the variance is 50, 50 to the positive. Anything that's a negative uh, would be in parentheses or would be in red or might have a minus in front of it, but typically it's in parentheses on these reports. Uh, cost of sales, got some costs in here. We budgeted 30,000, wow. You know what, that's a mistake. We budgeted 300,000 because you can see the variance is 20. So they made a mistake here. This was supposed to be 300,000. The actual was 320. The variance was 20,000. So if you take, uh, what are our gross profits? If you take sales revenue minus cost of sales would equal the 200,000. Um, the actual is sales revenue coming in at 550, cost of sales 320. Our profit, uh, gross profit is 230. Now that I said profit, but it, remember gross is in front of it. Gross means we haven't um, taken out our expenses yet. So keep that in mind. Um, now we look at the expenses. So we have selling expenses here. We've got the budgeted and the, versus the actual and what the difference is. Uh, inspection. Something was budgeted at 10. It actually cost eight. So you've got a variance here of uh, 2,000. 2,000 less than what we had expected to spend. So that's a good thing. Um, we've got some rent, appreciation. So you can see how this is basically all line items. And then you have another section here, which is year to date. So for this quarter, these are the numbers, but also year to date. And that's important because we probably have some overall budget numbers um, that we have to be mindful of. So this is what a budget report looks like. So when working with a budget, it's important to make good decisions so that you can operate within the bounds of your budget. So before making those major decisions that might have a huge impact on your budget, you really have to analyze those decisions closely. You know, there's some questions that you should ask before, let's say making uh, a purchase. Is the purchase budgeted? Budgeted, that's an easy one. Had you anticipated that? Does it have to happen now? If the answer is no, you didn't anticipate that and it's not in your budget, does it have to happen now or can it wait till the next time when you are able to include it in your budget. Should you lease an item or should you buy an item? Is it cheaper uh, to lease? Is this just a temporary thing? Uh, do you have to buy it? Because obviously leasing it, leasing it for a couple months is, is gonna be cheaper than buying it overall, uh, typically, but you may find that purchasing it is a, is a benefit. You have to do that research. Should we make this in-house or buy it from somebody else? Um, if there's a company and, that you've researched and you can get the item cheaper through them and cheaper and faster, and you don't have to put in another assembly line to make it yourself, that might be the best way to go. Uh, what is the justification or business need for the purchase? Does it need to be approved by upper management? That might deter you right there. Could you do without that item? Maybe you could restore the old item that you're replacing instead of buying a new one. What's the return on investment for that item? 
what are the additional costs related to the purchase? So maybe you're purchasing this big item, but there might be peripheral things you have to buy for it. Maybe it doesn't connect right with the other equipment, so you've got to buy some extra parts to do that with. Maybe there's some labor that you have to pay for to install the item. Maybe there's shipping, uh, big shipping charges that you, you know, have to pay. Maybe you weren't anticipating those. And what's the benefit of buying the item? Um, those questions are going to serve as a guide to making an informed decision for you. And you probably want to consult with either your supervisor or um, some subject matter experts in order for you to determine and build a case for buying the proposed item or maybe not buying it. One of the things that we mentioned in that last um, slide was a return on investment. Is this, is this purchase worth it? So another factor in making purchases decision, purchase, purchasing decisions that will impact your budget is the payback period. So this is the time it takes to recover the cost of your purchase. Um, the payback period is determined by dividing the cost of the purchase by the annual cash inflows the purchase is projected to return. So that would be um, this, um, expression here. It's basically the payback period equals the cost of the purchase divided by the annual inflows. I'll give you an example. Let's say you bought a new production device worth $15,000 and this production device is going to save you labor. Um, in fact, it's going to save you $5,000 in labor every year. Okay, so therefore the payback period for you to reap the benefits of that purchase, payback period is three years. Um, in the fourth year, you start benefiting from that purchase. Okay, um, so that helps you to make those decisions. It's just a simple calculation. It doesn't calculate the profitability. Um, or do, it doesn't factor in the time value of the money either. So those are other expressions like, you know, net present value, internal rate of revenue uh, that you would calculate for that. But the payback period is just meant to help you make the quick determination about the purchase. Is it worth it? If the life of this equipment is, let's say, 30 years, the equipment will last 30 years. I'm buying it for 15000 it's going to save me $5,000 a month. Year four, I start actually um, uh, making $5,000 a year because I'm saving costs. Then the actual benefit to you in the long run is, uh, let's see, 30 years minus 30, 27 years times 5,000. And what you'll find when you do that calculation is, oh, heck yeah, this is worth it as long as you have the upfront money to pay for that uh, machinery. I mentioned this before, whether to lease or buy, um, you know, but just a little bit more information on this. Leasing equipment has several advantages. Uh, if owning the equipment is not an essential requirement, leasing will allow you to uh, obtain the equipment for less money or sometimes no money invested in it. Leasing is just as beneficial as buying. In some cases, it's better. Uh, it just depends. With leasing, you don't have to expense depreciation. In fact, when the item breaks down or requires updating, the leasing company will usually come out and take care of the equipment or replace it. Um, one of the drawbacks, though, to leasing is the requirement of good credit. If you're a company that's just starting out, leasing probably isn't for you because of your short credit history at that point. Um, so there's, again, different things that you have to consider when you're either buying or um, leasing. For example, buying property also brings some tax advantages to you. Leasing doesn't. So um, just some things to think about. 
Do you have the cash to buy the item? What tax break would you get if you leased the item um, or bought? Is it necessary to own the item? And is having that fixed cost essential? Think about. Now, once you have a budget and you're starting to have data come in because you're actually expending, um, expending funds out of that budget or you're bringing in revenue from that budget during that budget time frame. How do you determine if you're on track? There's actually several steps to help you determine if your budget's on track. Here's a couple tips for making sure it's set up for success. Um, you could start by giving other people responsibility over certain areas of the budget. This also helps them in many ways, uh, such as you know giving them some accountability. Schedule regular budget review meetings, um, collect figures as they become available, compare the actual uh, with the budgeted amounts, which we talked about in the budget report. Um, give reasons for positive or negative variances. So, so you want to dig into that a little bit. Why did this happen? Because the more you learn about it, the better off you're gonna be in predicting future um, expenses or revenue. Um, let's see, some signs that you're on track are that your variances are minor. Um, the reasons for the variances are already known and predicted. And the reason for a negative variance is due to a unique incident and it's not a trend. So updating the budget requires you to be collaborative with others. You know, you should seek the right people, discuss the options to determine if you need to update the budget. I never like to update the budget unless it's absolutely necessary um, because you're kind of setting a once you set that budget you're setting a baseline and you have to make sure that you're measuring to that original baseline once you have to make changes to your budget you're going to um, have to set a new baseline and then make sure that you're measuring to that to that new baseline as well so um, you definitely want to make sure that you're not just willy-nilly changing the budget, that it's an absolute must that you have to change the budget before you do it. So um, just keep that in mind and, and some of these things uh, in mind as well as when you're possibly gonna change your budget. All right, so when to panic? If your budget is like off the rails, when do you panic? Obviously you can avoid uh, a panic situation by always keeping on top of your budget. Minimally, you should be checking uh, your actuals versus your budget on a monthly basis. Um, situations are, are going to probably arise that can affect your budget drastically, you know, and that would be cause for corrective action. Um, knowing when to take that action is really the trick. So here's some situations that could cause you to take some strong corrected action to your budget uh, pretty immediately. So one, uh, a serious situation arises. That's what S in the SAVE stands for. Serious situation arises within the organization. Maybe an unforeseen situation could happen that affects the company's income or the ability to operate. How about um, a pandemic? Other situations might be a natural disaster, a labor strike, a property loss, there was a big fire, uh, inventory shrinkage, which a lot of companies are going through right now because they can't get um, their products delivered so that they can you know, either assemble them or resell them. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, the uh, A in save stands for an accounting error. <laughs> Could be a big deal. So this could be a miscalculated uh, forecast on revenue or cost of goods needed for sales. Well, if we make a big mistake in the planning of our budget, we're going to have to make a big correction to that. So um, that's a time where we would have to make some changes. V stands for variance on the budget report that shows a huge gap without any visible reason. Definitely investigate it. But you may find after your investigation that you have to make some changes to your budget. And the E stands for external economic or regulatory situation. It could be a recession that really impacts you. It could be 
uh, changes in fuel prices, maybe some new laws are happening, there's shortages of supplies. So these external economic factors could affect um, your budget and so you have to make some changes. So just use that acronym SAVE for those ge four general categories and help you um, help to remind you when you should panic and when you shouldn't panic. And then you do want to adjust the budget for certain uh, special circumstances, um, such as these items here. Um, this actually stands for an acronym called LOAD. Um, so that's another way to help you remind uh, or help remind you. But LOAD stands for uh, if a special circumstance arises, you want to list all the potential issues, order the issues from least likely to occur to most likely, assess um, the cost of each issue, determine if the cost should be factored into the budget. Okay, it's kind of like risk management, but that's called LOAD. And then we put it all together. Um, there's uh, many approaches to putting together a budget. Here's just five steps that you can take, you know, when putting your budget together. And, um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, again, we put together an acronym called RADAR. So it's research, acquire information. So research both internal and external environments to determine, you know, the factors that might affect your budget throughout that budget period and adjust your number accordingly. Uh, research both internal and external environments to determine the factors that might affect your budget throughout that budget period. Oh, I sorry, I already said that. Research. Acquire the goals of the organization and every department, uh, if that's what your budget is covering, determine and work with the leaders to determine what's what it's going to take to financially support those goals. D is for develop, develop a working budget. This is used by uh, maybe your budget team, used for the review process and for also for making revisions as necessary. Um, some of the categories, these are pretty standard that you wanna make sure that you have in your budget are assets, liabilities, capital, income and expenses, um, the actual numbers, the projected numbers. So those should be some of the things that you're in, uh, that are in there. Uh, the uh, second A in radar stands for adopt. Uh, so you're going to adopt a final budget for final review, gain the approval by the board of directors or whoever has to approve it. The final budget can look similar to the working budget, but with um, the extra column for variances. And uh, Report. The last R is for report. Report results and advise uh, and revise the budget as necessary, only when it's necessary, showing all those variances in that particular column that we've talked about. And now we're going to move on to um, understanding the financial statements. Okay. Um, financial statements are something that if you are at the top of an organization, you want to know these financial statements inside and out. And in the full class of this uh, subject, we actually go into a lot more detail about these financial statements. Uh, but for now, I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with them. Uh, so we're going to look at a couple of these. Okay, let's talk about balance sheet. Uh, it's a report that is required by GAAP. GAAP is a term that you might become really familiar with. It just stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. It's the way that we do things. Everybody does them the same way, hopefully, um, in accounting. So in the balance sheet, uh, assets are expressed in terms of liabilities uh, and capital, which must equal each other. So balance sheet has to it's kind of divided in half. You've got assets on one side, you've got liabilities on the other, and they have to equal each other. Okay. Here's an example. You've got assets over here. You've got liabilities over here. And notice that the total assets 
equal the total liabilities. Okay, if this is not in balance, then there's something that's been done wrong in your accounting. Okay, so this is a typical balance sheet. Again, your balance sheet might have um, additional line items, depending on how big your budget is, or how many line items your budget has. Um, so you might have some additional stuff on here, but for the most part, this is what your balance sheet should look like. Income statements. It's a summary of the income and expenses of your company in a given period. It's also required by generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, usually companies are going to create a monthly and a yearly income statement, and it's going to list all the areas where income is generated. Um, it could be income from sales, income from interest. These are going to be listed separately. Income from investments, maybe. Uh, it all, also contains dividend expenses, operating expenses, cost of goods sold, taxes that were paid. And then the net income, or maybe it's a loss, it depends, is calculated by subtracting the expenses from the income. Um, the number, the net income, represents the revenue uh, or the loss, if it's a negative, after all expenses are applied. Okay, so I'll give you uh, a sample of that. So here's a very simple income statement. Uh, just to show you, we've got our revenue up here. So we've got sales minus cost of goods sold equals your gross profit. Remember gross means we haven't deducted our expenses yet from that number. Now we've got all of our expenses here. So let's say we have advertising expense You've got commissions expense, you add those two together, you get the total of those two. You've got office supply expense, you've got office equipment expense, you add those two together, you've got these guys. So you add these two columns together and you get a total of 13. Uh, 25 gross profit minus 13 equals 12. So your operating income is 12,000. And now you have interest revenues so that's a positive. So we had interest that came in. Gain on sale of investments. So we, maybe we sold some stocks, we made some money. Interest expense, okay, we expense tells everything, it's a minus. Uh, loss from a lawsuit, we were sued, okay. So you tally um, the 12 plus five plus three minus 500 minus 1500. Uh, da, da, I'm sorry. Uh, the total of this area here is six. We do 12 plus six is 18,000 is our net income. So basically this is our profit, 18,000. And that's what an income statement tells you. We also have a statement of retained earnings. So this can appear on a balance sheet or an income statement or a separate financial report. It's also required by GAAP generally accepted accounting principles and it reports the change in the owner's equity from one period to another. Um, like basically how good is the organization doing? What are what are its um, net assets? So the basic components are a beginning balance, a net income or loss, dividends paid, and then an ending balance. At the very bottom, we've got our total retained earnings. It's applied to the owner's equity under the capital heading on the balance sheet. So that's that's just a lot of detail, but let me show you what it looks like. So it's a very simple document. Uh, let's say this is the year 2015. This is the end of the year, December 31st, 2015. The retained earnings from the previous year were $390,000, um, but we made a mistake on our taxes and we owed uh, $10,000. So we have to subtract the $10,000. So our retained earnings adjusted were 380,000. Now our net income for 2015 happens to be, this is our profit. Our net income is 114,000. So we take 
the adjusted retained earnings from the previous year, we add the profit of this year to get a total of 494,000. And then we paid out dividends to our stockholders this year in the amount of 41,000. So we take our total of 494, we minus 41,000. And now the retained earnings for this year are 453. So if this was a, a single owner business, um, the value of the company went from, I shouldn't say value of the company. This is just kind of uh, liquid, uh, liquid assets. So the liquid assets went from 390 to 453 in a year. Okay, that's showing you the growth of the company in that year. And then you have a statement of cash flows. Uh, this helps to determine how cash flows in and out of the organization. It's considered a mandatory financial report, uh, something that you have to have. It doesn't factor in, you know, cash flows from credit transactions or accounting maneuvers like depreciating expense. It's just about money in, money out. Um, it can be a, a complicated report to produce, but understanding it is pretty simple. There's three main components of the statement, and they are uh, cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. When the cash flow reveals that a majority of the cash uh, is coming in from operations, that's a good sign to any regulators, to stockholders, and invest uh, people that are investing in your company. A negative cash flow doesn't necessarily mean the company is doing poorly. There could have been a large investment in equipment or inventory uh, during that time frame that it's being measured. So um, we have to actually, if we see a negative, we have to dig a little bit deeper. Um, if, however, the negative cash flow result is coming from poor operations, then it could be a sign of a company going bankrupt. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. And again, this is a really simple example, um, but you've got statement of cash flows for three months ending March 31st. So this is January 1st through March 31st, and this is 2019. So we had a net income. We had a sale maybe, um, and we sold $300 worth of merchandise, okay? There was no increase in accounts receivable, so this person paid cash. That's how we know that. Uh, an increase of inventory, there was a negative $200. Now, if you think about it, we sold something, they paid cash, $300 worth. We have a negative increase in inventory, which tells me that the item that they purchased for $300, we had valuated or it cost us $200 to have on our shelves. That's the thing that went out the door. And so we say it was cost of goods sold, basically. We say uh, our $300 cash minus what it cost us equals uh, net cash of $100, okay? Did we have any investing activities during this uh, three months? No. Did we have any financing activities? Yes. The owner of the company put in $2,000 of his own money. Okay, now we have $100 cash up here. We've got $2,000 cash here. The net increase of cash during this three months was $2,100. That's how you can read that. So basically, when cash went out the door, cash came in the door. Uh, again, this is a very simplified form just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it is. In a much larger organization, you'd have a lot more stuff going on here. Um, there's also other reports that you would do throughout the year, throughout, uh, you know, monthly, quarterly. And then you have this usually a big annual report at the end of the year. Um, it's just that annual document. It provides comprehensive reports on the financial activities and other activities too uh, are usually included in there. 
along with those financial reports from key people inside and out of the organization. So you've got some are listed here, uh, the different reports that you would do uh, that would go into the annual report. Okay, so there are a couple more things here. Um, what's missing from this training? Well, the big training that you could get for your organization if you were interested would go more into the generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, we would give you a lot more information on that. We would talk to you about um, income, profitability, working capital, bankruptcy, uh, some liquidation ratios. We would talk to you about uh, long-term analysis ratios, coverage ratios, leverage ratios, calculating that return on investment, doing some regression analysis. And the other great thing about that bigger uh, training is you get to do some real hands-on work. What we would do is create a uh, organization and we would give you actual financials from that made up organization. And you would be able to scour uh, the reports and look at the data and be able to find the errors yourself so that it gives you better practice for you know, what you're doing in your you know, regular job or maybe for your own company or for your own use. Um, I want to ask now if there's any questions that you guys might have, and you can either put them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. While you're um, determining if you have any questions, I just want to remind you again that this has been part of Power Hour, and we do this once a month, uh, the first Wednesday of every month at noon Eastern time. And you're always uh, welcome to join us. Um, uh, every month we do a different category of uh, training. So it's, it's something new all the time. Um, but definitely you can reach out to however you found out about this, uh, this class. You can always uh, go back to that resource and you can uh, look at the upcoming trainings that we have. Let me tell you what we have coming up. Uh, we do these, um, we do set these up in uh, quarterly. So we have, um, uh, we can give you what we have coming up for uh, February and March. Um, just give me two minutes and I will do that for you. I'm just going to um, say thank you for joining us for this training and I'm going to stop. Um, Sorry, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>